first of all, I gotta thank each of you in this room. We could have all made some very bad decisions last night in Las Vegas, <laughs> but we all showed up, um, and I hope it's worth your while. Second of all, I gotta say, um, for us marketers, there are many communities that we can engage with, but I gotta tell you, Brand Innovators is far and away among my favorite. Mark, Brandon, the whole crew come up with uh, great programming, the best and brightest CMOs and, and senior marketers. So it's gonna be well worth it over the next couple of days. I do say that Gen Z has the attention span of a gnat. And so I'm gonna go really quickly, because Gen Z goes really quickly. Um, but let me, let me start out with, with this. I'm hoping and thinking that many of you know American Eagle in this room. According to the most recent Piper Jaffrey teen survey, we were behind a little brand called Nike in terms of their favorite brands. So Nike is number one, American Eagle number two, Lulu three, number four was Adidas, number five was Shein. So we're not in bad company. And one of the main reasons reasons is obviously we are the number one seller of jeans to Gen Z, people aged 15 to 25. Little known fact though is we're also the number one selling jeans to women of all ages in the US. So take that Levi's. Um, so that product dominance is one of the reasons why we're so successful with Gen Z, but there are a lot of others, um, and I'm gonna get into those right now. First and foremost, I think our team has come up with some badass collaborations and partnerships over the last couple of years. And our customer says that in a sea of sameness in specialty retail, it's really important to cut through with something that is unique and ownable. And nothing, I mean nothing, is a better example than something we just pulled off in February. AE combined with Netflix, Netflix's number one show, Outer Banks, with an amazing collaboration and partnership. This actually started a couple years ago when I joined the team at AE. We started with talent, we did some product integration, but now that Netflix is taking some of that advertising money, we went all in. And we went all in on launch week, and I'm about to show you a video of an event called Poglandia. Um, I, I've had an amazing and privileged marketing career, but this probably was one of the best events I've ever seen, so take a look. So again, a really fun event um, that we were able to put on um, on the beaches of SoCal. 5,000 people sold out, could not get a ticket inside. Um, a couple of things um, that, that were big wins for our brand during that particular week. One is that we had surprise talent appearances at a couple AE stores. You had to be a loyalty member to get access to this event. I'm telling you, because I was there, tears were shed. Uh, teen girls screaming and yelling when they saw Chase Stokes and other Others. Second of all, and this is a crazy stat, Outer Banks was the number one search term on AE.com for two straight weeks. Now that's never happened in the history of the company. Jeans is always the number one search brand, or brand term. And so you can see the power of Outer Banks. And then we also sold exclusive on-site merch um, at the event over a six hour span. I kid you not, there was a two hour line consistently that shows you the passion behind this brand. So my first key takeaway for you guys is, what is the key cultural event that can be your differentiator for your brand? We were the single sponsor of Poglandia, didn't let anyone else involved, and I think we got paid for it in a really big way. Another collaboration that we're really proud of was our Pride collaboration last year. Um, there's an amazing DJ musician poet named MXM Toon. She actually was in our spring campaign and then this relationship built out in an authentic way to a Pride product collaboration. But why this one was a little different was she actually collaborated with the LBGTQ plus community inside of American Eagle. So my next key takeaway for you is that, yeah, you can go outside to look for great collaboration partners, but don't forget this 
some of your biggest advocates are inside your house. We have 35,000 retail associates with an American Eagle, and they combined with other Gen Z members of the community really made this collaboration a real popular one. Now, no disrespect to any other retail marketers in the room, but I am so proud of our team. In fact, I like to call them the best damn marketing team in retail. And probably the thing that I'm most proud of over the last year or so is our efforts in digital innovation, because we have been truly a leader in so many of these particular areas. I'll get right into it, because one of them was with our friends at TikTok. We actually have the brand strength and the budget to probably collaborate with most musicians, but Gen Z has this entrepreneurial hustle that we wanted to explore. And so instead of going with those bold faced celebrities, we actually looked for a new voice um, on TikTok and their new Sound On um, program. We found her, her name was Katrina Lee. She's a Toronto native, and she reworked one of her songs into a back to school jeans anthem for us. 10 billion with a B views later, um, that thing crushed it for us and really helped us with a very successful back to school season. So another takeaway is don't think necessarily for Gen Z that you have to have the biggest, the boldest, the outer banks kind of people. Sometimes these influencers, these creators on TikTok or other places are just as powerful and as just as impactful. Next up on Roblox. This guy's had butterflies in my stomach. Why do I say that? Um, as, as we mentioned in my intro, you know, I was at these, I, I learned the marketing skills at these very high touch, very high control brands like Calvin Klein and Abercrombie and Fitch. And when you're engaging with Gen Z, you literally have to just jump off a cliff cross your fingers a little bit and, and hope that this thing all works out. Roblox is a great example of that. My team had to put up with all the CMO naysayer questions and said, Brommers, you gotta chill. We're just gonna get on this thing and play around and see what happens. Well, what ultimately happened is we became the second most visited brand activation on Roblox, just behind Gucci. Um, about 60 million uh, fans um, uh, interacted with us. A couple takeaways here, guys. One, we we reskinned our experience almost every month or two to kind of give people a fresh take. We integrated our real life campaigns into Roblox. You could play tennis with it, um, with the tennis star Coco Goff, which was one of our ambassadors. You could go to a concert with Blue to Tiger, which is an up and coming musician. We also gave away $5 gift cards for um, redeeming real life product inside of Roblox. That also drove a lot of interaction. So again, whether it's those takeaways from Roblox or any senior marketers are in this room that just say, I gotta let go and let my team have some fun and let Gen Z be in control. That's what really worked for us here on Roblox. Speaking of a train wreck, um, talk about Be Real, right? Be Real was the number one emerging social media platform last year and also the number one platform that did not want to work with any of us marketers and brands in this room, right? So we hacked the system um, and we actually marketed to our community that we didn't know how the hell this was gonna go. Um, and we actually um, became the number one most followed brand on Be Real. Um, and we tried a little bit of everything. Um, we had uh, daily deals. We had live uh, shots from photo shoots. We had product drops. Um, and that was another thing that I think is it's really important to, if you're working with Gen Z is test, iterate, learn, move. Um, nothing has to be perfect with this crew. Um, and sometimes it can be messy. And honestly, Be Real was a whole lot of messy, um, but it was really successful for us. Next up is gaming. Um, if you are trying to reach Gen Z men, you need to be in gaming, full stop. Gaming is not the future, gaming is now. And we've had some very exciting partnerships in this particular world. With Twitch, um, we actually focused on something that maybe none of us, besides one of my work colleagues knows. We're known for jeans at American Eagle, but we're also the number one selling men's specialty underwear brand. Um, we actually beat some of my old competitors like Calvin Klein. Um, and so what we did on Twitch is we wanted to become known as the unofficial underwear of gamers because I'm just gonna say it, 
a lot of these younger Gen Zers are gaming in their underwear. Um, and so we decided to have a little bit of fun um, and we had a streaking contest. And yes, that pun is very intended. Um, and what happened was we were driving triple digit traffic comp onto our men's underwear section on AE.com when we were live with these um, particular streaking contests. So key takeaway here, gaming, get into it, explore it, um, because it is definitely happening as we speak. Next up, I hope up, my friend Jake is running up to see if this is uh, technically working. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Snap. Um, Snap has been a great partner of ours, and I would say at some point, innovation for innovation's sake gets a little tiresome for CEOs and CFOs, and show me the money is the name of the game. And far and away, there is no place um, that has delivered money for innovation like Snapchat. So we started these augmented reality pop-up stores. We highlight about 20 SKUs at each of these pop-ups, themed under something different each time. You're looking at our holiday um, gift-giving um, um, pop-up store from this past December. And I publicly stated this, and so I'll do it again. We've made more, more than $10 million inside of something that I thought was just gonna be a fun Gen Z entertainment experience. But we're actually driving revenue, and we'll continue to do this over and over again. And I would just posit for all of us that have made our careers in retail that we are in the mindshare um, warfare against everything else that Gen Z is excited out, about out there. And if you're not entertaining this audience, you will lose with this audience. And I think Snap was a great example of, it was first truly about brand metrics, it became as much commercially minded, and we scaled as quickly as we can go. So think about Snap for your commercial needs in terms of meeting with Gen Z. Biggest budget light item growth at American Eagle, and probably for many of this room, are influencers and creators. Why? They drive sales, they drive volume. My first example is happening right now as I speak, because this woman is going to be posting for us again in about four hours. True story, I was at the TikTok headquarters in December having a celebratory glass of bubbles with our TikTok account team, and I innocently asked, who is the creator that we should work with right now? And Farrah said, you have to work with Alex Earl. She is the it girl creator of TikTok. Next morning, I wake up to my text just blowing up, not just from AE people, but from other marketers um, out there and said, dude, Alex Earl just posted that American Eagle jeans are having a comeback. You need to jump on this right now. Then I got a phone call from our head of e-commerce, like Brahmers, what is going on? Because sales of a very specific wide leg gene went from number 65 to number eight in terms of sales overnight because of Alex Earl. So another key takeaway for your teams are if, if I had a dollar for every time I was asked to create a viral moment on TikTok, I'd be a very rich man and probably not here at the Shop Talk Week. <laughs> but what I can tell you is that you have to jump on this at the speed of light or at the speed of Gen Z. And I think one thing we've done well at American Eagle, and I would um, recommend that you do at your places, is you cut down all of the middlemen and middle women in terms of approvers, and you just let your team rock and roll. That's what happened with Alex. We then engage with Alex for two paid posts, and that gene then went to number one salary. She's gonna post this afternoon um, something else, um, and let's see where the games take us. But this is someone, again, that is moving product um, and moving it very quickly. Some of these kids, some of these creators are literally media empires, um, and you have to be able to, to jump as fast as you can. Another really fun thing that we've played around with um, is something completely new for us. And I would say, if I look back and reflect in my two and a half years here at American Eagle, this program has definitely overperformed my expectations and now is really one of the number one programs in terms of driving engagement metrics. Obviously, we all know that NCAA athletes can now take official sponsorships. You can be official partners with them. What our audience loves is getting to see the 
style and the lifestyle of these athletes. So it's all off competition, all off the, all off, um, the court, all off the field. And interestingly enough, the niche sports, especially the female sports, actually work much better than some of the big guns like men's college basketball or football. Our, all of these kids are just blowing up for us. And I'll, I'll point out one in particular, Livy Dunn, and she's everywhere and she's been in the New York Times, et cetera. Um, we were the, one of the first people to find her. She is a gymnast from LSU um, and she really has, has blown up, but as have some of these other kids. Um, and where audience, our audience says is these athletes have been deserving for so long and have been working in, my words, not theirs, a somewhat corrupt system. And it's great that now they can partner with real brands and get real partnership um, to, to, to drive their personal income and their profiles. So I would definitely recommend taking a look at NCAA athletes as a cost-effective, but very, very high-performing metrics for, for your teams going forward. Finally, if you're not playing in the social good space, again, you're not going to win with Gen Z, right? Gen Z votes with their values and they spend behind brands um, that support good causes. Now, one thing that we try to do at American Eagle, as we there's so many things that you can have impact on, is we've really narrowed down to three or four things to have the most impact on. One of them happens to be voting. Um, and so we partnered with Headcount and Global Citizen, for any of you that may have been in New York uh, in September, Global Citizen is one of the big music festivals out in Central Park. And during this past election cycle, next to Harry Styles, come on, who's Harry Styles? But next to Harry Styles, American Eagle actually registered the most Gen Zers to vote in that particular election cycle. Another important thing, and, and maybe another key takeaway for you guys, is it was nonpartisan. American Eagle sells in blue, red, purple, and everything in between. Um, but this was all about taking action and making sure your voice was heard. And so no matter what topic or what issue you were passionate about that you voted. Um, and this was, again, a really successful opportunity for us in social good. <sighs> okay, that was a lot to take in in, in 15 minutes, um, but hopefully some good stuff for you guys to take away.